coming. No, ma'am. See here, young lady. Can't you read English? Take a look at that. What? There's rules around here that's got to be obeyed. Now, come on, back this thing out of here. Who do you think you're talking? Who are you? Steve Mason. Stack it on the fat file. You back that thing out of my way and hurry. Yes, ma'am. Hey, wait a minute. Nothing doing. She's in wrong. Come on now. Get the thing out of here. Oh, I like that. I'll do nothing of the kind. No? You will. Well, I... Beautiful, but dumb. So who is she, anyway? Who is she? Just Janet Stillman, that's all. Oh, Janet Stillman, huh? Yeah, Janet Stillman. So that's Janet Stillman, huh? It won't be long now. Oh, who cares? Hey, Steve, the chief wants you in the office. Uh-huh. Uh, so what? And then, then after insulting me with his impudence, he had the colossal nerve to shove me aside and back my car out into the street. Look at that. Look at that. Why, he ought to be fired right now. He... Steve Mason, sir. Mason, my daughter informs me you were impotent and presuming a moment ago. Couldn't be helped, sir. You know we have rules. Why? Why, how... Now, Janet, please, dear. In the first place, she was doing about 40 and entering the exit gate. Nevertheless, Mason, it is an indignity I will not tolerate from my employees. You will report to the cashier. You are through as a stacker in this mill. Well, satisfied? You're a darling. I was afraid you'd let the bully get away with it. Hmm. Well, you run along. You're not going to forget that little celebration tonight. Just the four of us? Funny thing. Have we ever forgotten your birthday? No. But I have you alone so seldom. I just wanted to make sure. Darling, will you ever grow up? See you tonight. Too bad, old man. So that's Janet Stillman. Yep, that's her. Thanks. Come here. Yes, you. Come here. Mason, did you really do all those things to my daughter? Yes, sir. But it's no use discussing what you said I was true. I said as a stacker, you idiot. Come here. Uh, in this way? Yeah, come on here, this way. <laughs> Boy, I wish I had your nerve. <laughs> Shake. Come on. <laughs> you mean you're not sore because I spoke exactly. the way I did? Exactly. If I didn't love her so much and I wasn't such a darned old fool, I, I'd spank her. Have a cigar. Oh. Have a cigar. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, if you don't mind, I'll save it. All right. How long have you been with me? Oh, about two months, sir. Two months, huh? Yeah. yeah. My father was Len Mason. Yes. Len Mason? The foreman that was killed on the crane accident about a year ago. Sure, Len Mason. Yeah, my dad often used to tell me, if you don't mind, sir, what great pals you two were when you first started in this business. Yes, sir. We started on the same scrap crew together. Len was a fine fellow. <laughs> So you're a chip of the old block, huh? <laughs> and you picked my scrap pile to start on, eh? <laughs> yeah, that's right, sir. Well, 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 my boy, you and I are going to have a lot of good talks together, you know that? Yeah? Well, I'll tell you right now, as long as I'm foreman, I won't stand for the ship. No? Well, keep on swapping, Bright Eyes. You'll shift all right, in the direction of the gate. Yeah? Well, we'll see about that, too. Well, how do you do, Mr. Rankin? I had an appointment with Mr. Stillman. Yes, I know. Won't you be seated? No, thanks. 
<laughs> Mr. Rankin here by appointment. Now he'll have to wait. Well, I'd better get along to you. Sit down. That fellow's been trying to sell me an idea for a year. Yeah, but he I'm... can wait another five minutes. Oh, I better get back. And don't forget, you're still out of a job. See. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stillman's engaged. Won't you sit down? Do a good job of that cheering cry out, and maybe we'll move you right along up to the big time stuff, huh? <laughs> mm, thank you, sir. Oh, come in, Paul. Hey, he's a great old guy, isn't he? Yes, but few people realize it, especially his family. Hey, are they all as, uh, as headstrong as... Headstrong? Say, the thrill of that family is the old lady. Boy, has she got it. America's sweetheart, and then some. How come? Oh, she's just screwy. She's had her face lifted so many times, she can't even twitch her without busting a couple of stitches. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. He's a great old fella. Say, listen, take my advice, brother, and the next time the little snip comes around here, let her break her neck. Help her if necessary, but for the love of Mike, don't stop her. What do you mean? I mean, if you kick up another rumpus like that, she'll rag the old man till you're out here. Oh, you know. Oh, what a family. They made the poor devil forget there's such a thing as peace and harmony. Oh, thanks for the tip, sister. See that you don't forget it. Oh, well. Stillman, if you don't merge, we'll force you to the wall. Why, you... Listen. I built this business to where it is. It's mine. And I'll continue to conduct it, independent of a rotten merger designed to crush the smaller mills. Now, get out. I don't think Paul's so hot myself, but his mother's a baroness, and they represent the social elite both here and abroad. If only I dared invite him tonight. Heaven, it's 7.30. After all the planning done, your father might show us one bit of consideration by being home on time for a change. Oh, give the old boy a break. It's his birthday, you know. Oh, he's hopeless. Sometimes I wonder how in the world I ever happened to marry him. Oh, Mother, please, remember what the doctor said, crying will do to your face. Yes, dear. Thanks. <laughs> Gee, sis, what a break. Toby Tucker just phoned he's bringing the whole Follies troop over after the show. Dad ought to get a kick out of that. Yes, if he ever gets here. Boy, they're a swell bunch. will do. And if you continue to disobey me, I shall have to send you home to your mother. 
Now go to bed. Billy, take the back stairs. And if you're not asleep in half an hour, I shall punish you severely. So conservative with the lights, will it? Why, I... Uh... dignified occasion. <laughs> I've got one. Listen to this. Here's to 60. And you can't guess what? The funny old devil is still very hot. So drink to 60 and pray it's your lot that when you're his age, you'll be just as hot. <laughs> Young man, what are you doing up? I was waiting for you to go home. Well, well. <laughs> well, how do you like it? It's the finest present I ever received. Well, I guess you are. Slick as a whistle. I know what we'll do. We'll have a little celebration in all our room. We'll go and find the ice cream. 
What will Granny say? She'll never miss us, Sonny. Nobody will miss us. Yee, that's well. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That ball is celebrating. And then when it reaches the father sheave, it automatically drops the pigs into the railroad car. Hmm. According to your plan, that dispenses with the hand pig breakers. Yeah, that's the idea exactly, sir. Hmm. That is some improvement on our system. How long have you been coming in here and working on that thing? Oh, every noon hour for about a month. Oh, Barnes, yeah. <laughs> Guess I'd better be getting back to work myself, sir. I'll be out of your way in just a minute, Barnes. Come into the office, Steve, and bring that stuff with you. I'm interested in that contraption. Yeah? Very good, sir. Barnes, uh, you can have that. And if Stillman doesn't meet that contract with Cook and Son on time, we're prepared to step in and fill the order. I get you. We'll make it well worth your while. There's room in this organization for men like you, Turner. Hey, being on my lunch hour, I gotta step on it. I'll get busy right away. Fine. Right away, sir. Well, you seem to be traveling pretty fast for a guy who got himself fired a couple of months ago. Yeah, I've got that idea of mine working on a new pig casting machine. And is it a honey? A bunch of pig breakers won't think so when they find themselves out of a job. That's where you're wrong, sweetheart. We've got a job for every man. Yes? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, miss. Miss my father in? Yes, but he's engaged right now. I'll wait. Steve? Well, running an old 16, Bill? Yeah. I get a kick out of her this thing, thanks to you. Or I'd still be driving a truck. Would you mind working again tonight? Boss wants to do a little shopping on that cooking time contract. No, I don't mind. Not a boy. Say, hey. what's Turner doing with that bunch of pig breaking? I don't know. But there is something I have been wondering about. What? That rush business that needs a taxi cab every day in his lunch hour. It happened again today. Oh, yeah?
Together we'll show them. Paid me the greatest compliment one man could pay another. He trusted me so completely. He's placed everything he possessed in my control. Well, for the love of peace, even his family. Yeah, even his family. Well, but good heavens, Steve, why they... Oh, I know they've always resented me. I see. And it hurts, doesn't it? Because you've always been in love with Janet. Even after being treated like a doormat by the whole family. I suppose you're right. Well, now you're the boss, I hope you're smart enough to live up to it and make them like it. In witness thereof, I hereon to set my hand and seal the day and year above mentioned. Signed, John Stillman. Why, this is preposterous! Why, it's the craziest thing I ever heard of. My father must have been insane. See here, Mr. Morgan, are we to understand that father left his entire estate, everything he possesses under the control of this scrap iron stacker? And we must count count to him, account to him for everything we do, every penny we spend? Yes, Mrs. Stillman. Oh, Janet, can't you do something? 
Say something. What is there to say, Mother? It isn't a matter of pennies, Mrs. Stillman. Your husband provided liberally for all of you. You're evading our question, but I'll tell you here and now, we won't stand for it. This guy influenced my father, but he isn't going to get away with it. Will or no will. David, David, you shouldn't say such things. Well, it's true, and he can't deny it. I'll wait for you in the drawing room, Mr. Morgan. Why, the idea, the, the barbarian. Mother, don't see. He's got his nerve with that superior attitude. I'd like to... Oh, David, all this wrangling isn't going to help. Oh, Mr. Morgan, isn't there anything we can do? You're an attorney. Tell us, what can we do? I tell you, Dad was insane. That's the way out of it. On the contrary, your father was quite sane. Everything he did was, shall I say, ironclad. Well, what do you mean? Legally, you are all privileged to contest the will. But if you do, I must remind you that it still provides that all contestants will be cut off without a cent. Father always did have a grand sense of humor. Yes, it's very easy for you to talk. You can pack up and go back to England. You don't have to stick around and take orders from a... Oh, what's the use? Yes? What is the use? Oh. Well... Well, what the devil's the matter with her? <laughs> oh, Mother, please don't. <laughs> Darling, it doesn't do any good to cry. Oh, hello, Bill. Oh, hello, Steve. Hey, Steve. I'm glad you're here. Mm, well, that makes me glad, too. It's awfully lonesome without Yeah, yeah, I know. We both loved him very much, didn't we? Huh? Oh, come on now, come on. No tears. You know, Granddad wouldn't like that, would he, huh? Oh, Mother, please stop crying. Oh, hang my face. This is outrageous. What are we going to do? What are we... I don't know. You heard what Mr. Morgan said. He said some very nice things about Steve Mason. Surely, Father... Say, are you falling for that guy? Don't be silly. It's just that your attitude isn't fair to... To Father. Oh, you talk like a sentimental sap. Oh, stop your quarreling and help me think. I ask you again, what are we going to do? Oh, if we could only make it so hot for him, he'd be glad to pull out. Glad to pull out. You talk like an idiot. With his nerve, the man doesn't know the difference between a bouquet and a brick bag. Oh, Mother. Oh, well, you can't be a lady when dealing with swine. I'm going to have a talk with that guy. Oh, if I ever lived through it all. Oh, Mother, please. Well, don't you see, it's just as hard on the rest of us as it's only stopped the squeezing. Thank you. Hey, you! Mason! I want to talk to you. Yes? There's a personal matter of mine. Not that it's any of your business, but... And to think your father could have been such a fool. Oh, Mother, please don't. Mr. Rankin just phoned again, Miss Janet. I've told you a dozen times I'm not interested in his calls, Molly. Oh, Janet, don't be a fool. Oh, please don't start that again. But don't you see what you're doing? He might be able to help us. Oh, I can't stand him, despite his family, please. Oh, there you go again. Just like your father, I don't come. All I've suffered to... Oh, Mother, don't. <laughs> Everything I've done to make you and David somebody worthwhile. Why, look at Diana. She married a lord. You could. Oh, but it's no use. Your poor old mother means nothing. Oh, that isn't true, dearest. You know how much I love you. Why, I... Say, who does that guy think he is, anyway? Our lord and master, son. But your sister seems to enjoy it. Oh. Well, what has she done now? She's refusing to listen to reason about Paul Rankin just because of your father's ridiculous notions. Oh, yes? Well, maybe she'll get some sense when I tell her just how far this guy Mason is going into this business of running our lives. I well, know what's happening. I just told him about my engagement to Flo. And what do you suppose he said? What do you think he had the nerve to crack? Well, what? Go on. He started handing me that bunk about being too young. And don't I think it would be a good idea to prepare myself for the responsibilities of marriage by going to work? He probably added he'd give you a job in your own mill. Yes. Said he'd help me. Give me every opportunity. Well, laugh that off, will you? Oh, don't you see? You can't make a silk purse out of a thousand years. He's trying to drag us down to his level. 
perhaps you're right. Well, now you're talking sense. Then well, you'll never be sorry, sis. You will call Paul Rankin? Yes, I'll call him. Oh, you're a darling. That a girl. Well, I've got to run along and take floor to rehearsal. See you later. Oxford, 8956. And of course, I couldn't understand your father's change of mind after he had verbally agreed to the merger with me. Oh, everything's so muddled up. I don't know what to believe. Mother and David say it's all his fault. But he had a terrible influence over father. Well, if he had anything to do with changing your father's mind in regard to the merger, then he certainly has hurt you financially. Janet, if you'd only let oh, me... Oh, Paul, please. Please. He has his nerve keeping us waiting. What are we going to say to him, Mother? Well... We shall try to reason with him at first, and then we shall... Pardon me. Mr. Stephen Mason. I'm sorry I'm late, Mrs. Tillman, but I was detained by urgent business. Miss Lancet, may I present Mr. Mason? How you do, Mr. Mason? Flo is my fiancé. Now see here, Mason, I... David, please. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Mr. Mason, we might as well get to the point at once and have it over with. I presume you refer to David's marriage to Miss uh, Lance. That's right, and I want it understood that David, I... please. Mr. Mason, they have my consent. David is of age, you know, but I feel that his present income is not sufficient to provide for them in a manner befitting our position. And I want you to release his inheritance to him. Miss Lance. Some months ago, I suggested to David that he do something to for the responsibilities of marriage. That's crazy. Why should I? David, please. Yes, Mr. Mason. It's one thing for a young man to be willing to retire on the wealth made for him by his father's toil. It is quite another for that same young man to have enough pride and self-respect to carve his own future. Isn't that right? Yes. Mr. Mason, it's just absurd as to suggest. Mrs. Stillman, if you please. But you're quite right, Mr. Mason. David has the latter in mind. He intends to enter the bond business with his inheritance. Yes. Now, what's the matter with that? I think it's a very excellent and dignified idea. That is not the kind of independence I mean. David's father laid the foundation for his son's future. Now, you want him to take advantage of that, don't you? Yes. If he's willing to go to work and prove that he's capable of handling that inheritance, then, of course... Are you referring to the mill, Mr. Mason? Yes. He wants me to start at the bottom in the pig iron. Yes, at the bottom, where your father started. Of course, it'll take a little time, but uh, you'd be willing to wait, loving him as you do, uh, wouldn't you, Miss uh, Lancet? Why, uh, yes. Yes, of course, but uh, I can't see any necessity for waiting. Mason, you're talking nonsense. Mm, that's right, there is no real necessity. With David's present income and his wages, shall we say, as a member of a scrap crew, that would provide all the comfort. Uh, that is for love in a cottage. Because I assume this... Uh, Lancet. Thank you, uh, Miss Lancet. That you intend giving up your stage career. You're joking, Mr. Mason. Why should David work as a common laborer? Love in a cottage. Indeed. Mm, I thought so. See here, Mason. What do you mean you thought so? You've gone far enough running our lives for us, making fools of oh, us. Oh, shut up. Mr. Mason, how dare And listen, both of you. This woman is... Here, take a look at that pedigree. Good heavens! She's been in prison! She had a child by a hoodlum! Amazing, isn't it? You're a wise guy, aren't you? Oh, 
Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Gilman. Oh. Count Pisani. Why, Lonzo? <laughs> Hello. Why, have you forgotten? Well, uh, while we're on the subject of parasites, Mrs. Gilman, this gentleman isn't really an Italian nobleman. He's a barber. A barber? Well, but a very good barber. He shaved me at the Savoy Hotel in San Francisco about a year ago. You remember? No, he does not remember. Good afternoon. Oh. Oh. But Elmira, so you're a barber, eh? Oh, I can't stand it. Steve Mason is killing me. Oh. I know. <laughs> Paul Rankin. I'm going to see if he has any good ideas. Oh, but... Oh, 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 oh. Oh, hmm. Pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we'll just have to do like the others, carve down to this so-called depression. Write a letter to Carver, the First National Bank. Tell him he'll have to renew that note for $100,000 due the first. Take this up with... with Grange. This one with... Uh, May I come in? Certainly. Won't you sit down? No, thanks. I'm in a hurry. I need some money. You received your allowance, didn't you? I didn't come here to go all through that again. I want $3,000. Hmm. And for what do you want so much money? Isn't that entirely my business? Well, in that case, do you mind running along so that I can conduct what is my business? I want that money and I want it now. And if you must know what for, it's a new roadster. Oh, but my dear, you just bought a new roadster. Only about a month ago. What difference does that make? Oh, now, please be reasonable. I want a new car and I want it today. Young lady, you and I are going to understand each other once and for all. You've got to realize that I am here to safeguard your father's estate, not to satisfy the extravagant whims of the family. We won't go into that. Do I get that check? No. Why didn't you knock her down? down on the veranda. Grandma and Uncle David want you to come down. I know. I'll bet you had another running with Steve. Well, what do you mean? Plenty. He's a great guy and you're goofy about him. Only you won't admit it. Why? Why, you little... I, I guess I gotta go. James promised to take me down to the mill. Don't forget that big stiff Rankin's waiting for you down on the veranda. <laughs> And as I told Jeanette several months ago, your husband realized the advisability of consolidation. I'm only suggesting this now as a means of carrying out what he himself would do today. Well, I'm with you. We've got to beat Steve Mason at his own game, and that's that. But what would you suggest? How shall we start? Well, to begin with, uh, you've all pursued the wrong method with it. You've antagonized him. But good gracious, what would you have us do? I get it. We've been trying to trap the fly with vinegar and it can't be done. That's right. Now get busy. Gain his confidence. Do anything he wants you to do. Humble yourselves if you have to, but do it. Get that, Jeanette? Well, what's our first move? Well, to begin with, I should say the best plan to pursue would be to, uh, well, we'll say invite him over here some afternoon for cocktail. See? Uh... like to do the junior member of this firm a favor. Now, what do you want? Well, you know how particular old Mike is, and well, 
a swell day, you know, kind of hot and all that. So you want to take a ride in Mike's crane booth and get in everybody's way, huh? I won't get in anyone's way. Honest, I won't. No? If you'll give me an okay, I'll let you know some of the swellest dirt. Oh, yes? Yeah? <laughs> you wouldn't try to bribe me, would you? I can and Steve have another scrap. You don't say. Uh-huh. And what do you think? What? When she came home, she was blowing her eyes out. She was silly about it. She came to me, and I told her so. Boy, was she mad. Thanks, pal. Hello, Grange. Hello, Billy. Great kid, isn't he? Yes, he's smarter than the whole family put together. But listen, sis, you've got to do it. Rankin knows what he's talking about. But you say we must scheme to virtually ruin our business. It doesn't sound reasonable. What do women know about that sort of thing? Leave it to David and Paul. But I want to know. And you have a right to. Don't you see, it simply means losing money now to make more in the end. Sure, that's right. When we smash Mason, Rankin takes over the mill and cuts us in 50% on the consolidation. But, but what you want us to do is, well, it's dishonorable. And it isn't fair to Steve Mason. Fair to him? Good heavens. You sit there and make a crack like that when the guy moved right in on us, when he's probably robbing us blind? Yes, and the way he's outraged and humiliated your poor old mother. And made fools of us. And our social position, he's ruined it. Ruined everything I've suffered so to achieve. Oh, she's hopeless. She'd like to see us wind up in the pigsty with Mason. Oh, all right. I'll do it. Oh, you're a dear. And a girl. <laughs> And after all, it's the only sensible thing to do. <laughs> now remember, sis, spread it on thick. You know how sorry we are at all that bunk. You're lovely. And if there's anything to the gossip that the young fool is crazy about you, he'll be putting in your hands tonight. Mr. Mason is waiting, Miss Janet. If you need any reinforcements, just shout. Thanks. You better keep off the stage. You might make me miss my cue. Good luck. Good evening. Good evening. When I uh, received your note, you said it was important. It is. Quite. And it was awfully decent of you to come after, after... Oh, let's drop the formalities. Won't you sit down? Steve, I'm terribly sorry. I never realized until I left your office the other day what, what horribly selfish fools we've been. Mother, David, all of us. Why, Janet, I... I've been thinking about this all day. I should have started thinking that his father did it five years ago. Oh, I... I can't expect you to forgive me for all the rotten things I've said and done, but... I wish we could be friends. Oh, I... I've been terrible. And you've been so sweet, so kind, so patient. Why, I... I even hit you. <laughs> well, that's all right. That's, that's nothing to worry about. Then you... You will forgive me and... And we can be friends. Why, of course. Oh, gee, gosh, Grandma, what do you think? What do you think, Uncle Dave? Aunt Jeanette and Steve have kissed and made up. Kissed and made up? Oh, yes. Well, not exactly kissed, but they're down on the veranda. And Aunt Jeanette said she was sorry, and Steve's forgiven her. And, well, everything looks hotsy totsy That's very nice. Now, run along and do your lesson. Gee, isn't it swell, Uncle Dave? Yeah, great. Beat it. Boy, I told you she'd get away with it. Thank heavens, if only everything turns out all right. Say, we're over the worst turtle right now. The rest is a sin. Why, why, just this morning, David and I were talking, and he said he wanted to work at the mill, as you suggested. 
And I want to help, too. We both want to accomplish something, to amount to something. Do you really mean that? Of course. Oh, that's great. That would please your father. I'm so glad. Tell me that bid you're working on is for the steel for the big dam up in Nevada? Mm-hmm. Jehovah bid. It's the biggest thing Steve ever tackled. Say, nothing's too big for Steve. Say, aren't you going to lunch? No, not until I get this thing finished. Steve's waiting for it. Hold it, Grange, hold it. Hold what? How can I draw a good picture of you when you're wiggling like a worm? Oh, you're so busy. Yeah, but I... I tell you, Carson, that's out of the question. If you'll just bear with me for about ten days, we're to cinch for that civic building bid and go to steal a Hoover Dam job for amalgamated. Yes, I know, but... All right, I'll see what I can do. What's the matter, Steve? Something wrong? Nothing serious. Has Smith gone to luncheon yet? No, she doesn't go until late. Anything I can do? No, thanks. Just tell Smith to come in here, will you? Steve wants to. Yes? Oh, Smith, I want you to close out my personal account at the First National. Turn the money over to Carson on that $100,000 note. What? Yes, and get those bonds of mine out of my safety deposit box. Give them to him as additional security. I ought to hold him for a while. Steve, are you crazy? Why, it's everything you have in the world. Why, the risk is too great. Please to... don't argue. I never would have had the money in the first place if Stillman hadn't made it possible. It's just coming in handy now, that's all. Oh, but Steve, it isn't the same. Mike, you worked for it, and it's yours, and you can't take a chance on throwing it away. Will you please do as I ask? I do it myself, but I've got to wait news from Bill on that city bit. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Here's the key to the safety deposit box. Oh, great, now you're coming with that Hoover bed. I'll have to finish in a few minutes. Oh, for the love of Mike, don't let it get out of your sight. Oh, Smith. Yes? This is just between you and me. Understand? I get you. Steve! Bracken and his crowd got the civic bid. Thank you, Ned. They've cut our throats. They couldn't have. Our figures were rock bottom. Are you sure? Well, what do you think I'm sweating about? Listen, they're not kidding me. I figured it out, Steve. There's a leak in this office somewhere. Bracken's being tipped off for our bid somehow. It can't be anything else. Oh, well, you're crazy. But, Steve, at least... Check up on the estimators. Jones, Peters, Old Grange. Check on everybody. No. They're all old, faithful employees. Don't you see? I can't insult them by questioning their loyalty. No, it isn't that. For five years, Rankin has been threatening to smash us. Well, he's making good. But it's costing him plenty. He's paying off the other end. That's what he's doing. He's playing a rotten game with the contractors themselves. All right, have it your own way. Phil, that Hoover bid for amalgamated. How's it coming? Grange will have it up pretty quick. Good. <laughs> Oh, well, we've 
We've taken plenty of hard knocks together. I reckon we can come through this all right. Why, that Hoover job will fix everything. Because the Amalgamated is one spot ranking can't buy into. They're square. That's why Stillman got all the business. And we're going to keep on getting it. Okay, you're the doctor. You want me to make that errand? Sure. Tell Carson I'll see him in the morning. Please. I've been here long enough to see how things are going and I don't think we can lick it alone. Other firms are consolidating. Why don't you... If you're referring to Rankin, that's out. Yes, yes. Get me that Hoover bid as quick as you can and we'll cinch the deal today. Okay. I'll get back to the mill and see Jeanette. She'll turn it over all right. Okay. Janet, please. I said that a merger with Rankin is out of the question. That is final. Then you're not considering what's best for the interest of my father's estate. I'm just trying to reflect his principles, his ideals. Oh, I guess you're right, Steve. I never thought of it that way before. But you can count on me now. No, thank you. <laughs> Here's the Hoover business, uh, Jeanette. It's all finished. Yes. I'll give it to Steve in a minute. How about going to lunch with me today, Billy? Okay, I'm starting. Oh, hello, Grange. Hello. Hello, Bill. Hello, Grange. Hello, Grange. Well, what about it? Rankin's holding up everything for the Hoover bid. Is it finished? Yes. But Rankin's not going to get it. Quit your kidding. Come on, hand it over. I'm not kidding. I'm not going on with this rotten business. But Jeanette! Gee, where? I forgot something. I'll see you later. I'll meet you at the gate. Well, hurry up. I'm hungry. Hey, I'll be right back. Oh, David, it isn't fair. It isn't fair to Steve, to ourselves. We've been all wrong about this thing. Are you crazy? Listen to me. Steve says the Hoover job will put us back on our feet. If it does, we'd be cheating ourselves. We can't give that bid to Rankin. You double-crossing little... <sighs> Why don't you admit you're falling for Mason? That you'd help him ruin it. Your own brother, your own mother. Oh, that isn't true. Listen to me. If we do this thing, we haven't a shred of self-respect left. I don't trust Rankin. I never have. Oh, David, I'd rather lose everything. Are you going to give me that bid? Well, I... I haven't got it. Grange gave it to Steve. David, no, no, you mustn't, I tell you. Oh, no? Well, I'm getting it to rank in my stuff, and you'll keep your mouth shut for a while, understand? Oh, David, please. I'll make a snappy pal. I'm in a hurry. Answer nothing, Uncle David just had an awful battle. Yeah? Boy, did he suck. Soccer? What about? Well, something about about the Hoover bin. The Hoover bin? What about it? Well, something about about giving it to Rankin. To Rankin? Are you sure? Yeah, why? Oh. Where's the Hoover bin? I don't know. You're lying. Where is it? I tell you, I don't know. Now, you listen to me, you little fool. Oh, leave me alone. You've been dealing with Rankin. You've been cutting Steve's throat. You've been... Oh, I didn't mean to. I thought that you thought. Have you any idea of the misery that you and your tribe cost your father? Have you any idea what you're doing to that man in there? Why, well, you're killing the whitest fellow that ever lived. 
who's going to give up everything in the world to save this outfit. Look at that. And you were crazy enough to connive with that dirty crook Rankin, the man your father kicked out of his office. And for what? For what? Just to satisfy your contemptible conceit. Just to crucify Steve Mason because he happened to have guts enough and sincerity enough to start at the bottom and to get someplace. Oh, I... Miss... Miss, get David. He... he's gone. Oh, good heavens, you didn't give him that Hoover bid to take to Reagan, did you? No, no, I didn't give it to him. He took it. Fanny what? Fanny Smith. Now listen, I... Address? 624 Madison Avenue. Well, hurry up, give it to me, and let me get out of here. You big... Janet, what's the matter? What? Why, well, you're as white as a ghost. Why, oh, Steve, I've been rotten. A despicable chief. David and I have... We've double-crossed you with Rankin. And... I did it. 
I don't expect you to forgive me, but... Signed, sealed, and delivered. Oh, well, that's fine. talking about? Who was scrapping on the what? The Hoover Bee. I just discovered this little devil took it off my desk. Really? I didn't want Uncle David to get it, so I took it and beat it. And besides, he shouldn't have let it out of his sight like Bill said. If I was running this place, I'd fire him. Why, you do oh, no, I didn't get it. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. 